I'm Clint and welcome to Swatch's live stream number 52. We're going to be looking at the arts missions for the Creature Illustration Challenge on this episode. Of course, we'll be leaving a couple of minutes in order to allow people to join in the live stream live. Uh, then we'll be getting to that. Before that, we're going to just be talking about some various topics and also going over some uh, announcements concerning uh, future challenges and just general uh, Swatch's information. So, uh, just double checking, the stream looks like it is receiving over on YouTube, so I'll minimize that. Uh, well, thank you for joining, especially if this is your first time at Swatches. I am Clint Curley. I am an illustrator best known for my work with Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. But this channel, and it is, and it's uh, art competitions, well not competition, they're challenges, nobody is not a winner. Uh, are all about you guys and improving your skills and just giving you an idea kind of what it's like in order to work uh, professionally. So I will come up with something like you see here. This is the Curtain Challenge, the Gilded Guardian, something that I make up. Uh, I give you the parameters that you might have on a actual commission and get you used to understanding what it's like to work on a schedule, what it's like to sort of work with an art director. I, I, I act sort of as an art director on this and also as an art teacher trying to give you feedback and help encourage you and teach you to improve your skills. Uh, if you want more information on swatches and the art uh, challenges and the, the educational materials that I have, uh, join the Facebook group. It, it's open to everybody. Go to swatches.group, www.swatches.group. And you can join over there. There's already over 1,800 people joining over there. Uh, it's very active, a uh, great place to get feedback on your work from peers, and also a good place to find resources if you're trying to find some good information. Uh, Mando, Brian, Joel, good to see you guys. Lucius, Gado, Matt, great to have everybody. Uh, I wrote down some notes here, so I just need to pull them out before I forget. Some stuff that we will need to go over. Pull out my pen. I forgot to bring my heater with me, so it is a little cool in here right now. Uh, the heater is left really low if nobody is in here. Uh, as it heats up, I should be able to take off my big coat. Uh, I can't remember, did I leave this open? Yes, okay. So these are some of the announcements from last time I did didn't clear it from last time but uh, some of them are still the same so let's go over some announcements uh, number one is Swatches group I already mentioned that this month March 29th if you want to meet me and also just go by and see a really good art uh, event uh, kind of a convention sort of thing then go to Spectrum Fantastic Art Live. It will be in Kansas City, Missouri, March 29th through 31st, I believe. Uh, simultaneously, the Planet Comic Con will be going on at the same location. It's kind of a two-for-one deal if you want to see them both on the same weekend. Uh, I will not be exhibiting there, but I would like to meet up with any of the other Swatches viewers and members while I am there. So... Feel free to come by and join me at that. Uh, consultation dates need to be opened. Uh, they will be opened. So uh, I think I think we're probably there. Might be a couple of days left, but I need to open some more for the rest of the month. Uh, consultation. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one video consultation with me for half an hour or an hour, going over whatever is going on with you and your art. Uh, your education, revolving, uh, reviewing your portfolio, uh, maybe you have your first commission and you need somebody to kind of give you some points on it, then schedule time with me. Go to artmentor.com with a hyphen and you can schedule that. Uh, yes, uh, previously swatches hit 50,000, which is still cool, but that's not when the announcements this time. Uh, what do we need to talk about this time? Oh yes, uh, two weeks. For final. So if you are wanting to get in in this challenge or if you're in this challenge and simply for a reminder you will have two more weeks before you need to submit the final. It's not next week. We've been doing two week challenges. It is now a four week challenge and I'm putting a different live stream covering different topics 
uh, in the in-between weeks. So two more weeks for the final to give everybody a bit more time. And also, three, four, five, uh, Patreon vote. All right, so for those of you who support the channel by being a patron, I'm going to be putting up a vote for what you want the next Patreon reward to be. I have three options. Now this month I have four commissions that I have to work on. So I'm not going to be able to put out an ebook this month. Those are very time consuming. So I am planning to put out a video for Patreon this month. And there are three things that I am interested in covering just to give you a heads up. Uh, don't vote here. I will put the vote out on Patreon for the patrons. But just to give you a heads up, one is improve your painting. <laughs> painting, if I spell that right. Number two is painting process. I'll explain these. And number three is D and D characters. Uh, we got a bunch more people joining in. Uh, Will, hey man, good to see you, Will. Uh, Zeljika, I'm sure I butchered her name, but I appreciate you joining. <laughs> and Sop F1, good to see you. Okay, so the options will be improve your painting. I want to do a video. It'll be an hour-ish long, and it will just be like. If you're looking at your piece and you want to improve it or your piece is already good and you still want to improve it it's basically the thought process that i go through when i sit down and i look at somebody's artwork like i do in these and i give feedback on the artwork no matter where the artwork is i want to be able to say something to be able to improve it and most of the time it's one of just a handful of things so this is me saying if you want more drama in your image this is what you do if you want your piece not to feel so flat this is probably the mistake you're making and this is how you fix it if you want more depth in your image this is how you can do it if you want to just give it better polish this is how you do it these are common oversights that people forget to do and if you do them it will improve your image so it is just like a good video just running down the list of okay you, you put your piece together, you're looking at it, before you go to your, your really detailing painting phase, watch the video, make some notes. Oh, I've got to do this. Oh, I can improve it by doing that. And it's all about just uh, refining the mental process that will improve your painting. Uh, number two, painting process itself. I'd like to do one where it is just going step by step through the painting process and breaking it down to about 10 different steps and say we're going to start with the uh, the concepting phase and i'm giving you tips on how to do each stage correctly and the questions that you should be asking at each stage and what sort of answers you should be coming up for yourself with each stage now this could be apply to about any kind of artwork is it going to be a character is it going to be environment is it going to be a creature it doesn't really matter these sorts of things are just what you need to ask and answer at each stage so for the concept then it's do you know what this piece is actually about do you know what the mood of this image is going to be is the uh what is the outlet for this image if you don't know where it's going to eventually be used, then maybe you need to know that. Is it going to be printed on a card? Okay, well, that's probably going to give you dimensions that you need. Is it going to be printed on you know, a t-shirt? All right, well, that might adjust how you handle the colors. So it's just making sure that you know what you can about the end game before you start. And then we get into things like authenticity and believability. My piece doesn't feel very believable. What can we do during the research phase in order to find the right references to add the believability and authenticity to your image? So that's sort of just 
from start to finish, 10 steps, what you should be addressing and considering each step. Number three is D&D &D characters. Uh, I've done videos on the painting process for various of my magic, magic images, but I've not done so for any of my D&D &D stuff. Uh, and fairly recently, I had come out uh, two images for D&D. &D. One was the Black Viper for the Dungeons, I mean, the um, Dragon Heist campaign. And also Halister Black Cloak for the Dungeon of the uh, Mad Mage book. And those are both, uh, one's a lady, she's kind of a, uh, a burglar sort of character with a rapier. Uh, I didn't think to grab the images. And the other one is this crazy bearded old mage dude. Uh, no backgrounds. And on those would be able to talk about trying to find poses that work for your characters. How to establish a character and a bit of narrative without any background. How to render a character more for D&D that's slightly different from magic. Uh, how to handle some of the materials when you're rendering a character like that. How to add a bit of age and these sorts of things. Uh, with the Mad Mage, how to make him look crazy. How do you convey crazy on a character? Uh, so those are sorts of things. If you're interested in that, of course, go out there. Now, this voting will only be available for patrons. So if you do want to vote, you will need to go over to patreon.com slash swatches at the $10 level or above, and you will be able to vote on this. And it'll probably go up either tonight or, or early next week. Okay, so that is the uh, rundown for the announcements this episode uh martin good to see you leo kayla appreciate you guys joining in making time to uh, catch the live stream as usual if you guys have some questions that you would like to throw to me during the course of the stream feel free to put them in the chat and put swatches in your text somewhere probably at the start so it will flag it for my attention. Also, if I am reviewing your image and you are in the chat live, feel free to uh, toss me a comment or a question uh, that you would like me to address during your time. Uh, I'm not going to go lengthy with it, but I will try to uh, hit something quick if I can. All right, so this was the challenge. If you're joining in live, I mean, if you're joining in for the first time or you're unfamiliar with what they're trying to do, uh, as you can see here, this is the breakdown of the image that they are trying to create. Uh, I have no ownership of these images. They're just to inspire you guys and give you something to work for. I do not have any claim to these after they are finished, just to be clear with that. Okay, um, what else with that? Oh yeah, if you want to jump into this challenge and you haven't done so yet, you can still do it. Uh, you can do it right up to the the, I mean, the last day. Uh, if you want to come up with something and submit it in and submit in a final without creating a sketch or joining in at the beginning, that's fine. You can jump in these challenges at any point. Okay. Uh, but in order to get your stuff reviewed, you do need to be a $10 patron or above over on Swatches. Uh, and it is just one of the perks that you get for being a patron. That's not the only thing. That's one of the things. Uh, for instance, uh, whatever the video is that comes out for this month, then you would get that in addition to, of course, being able to join the challenges. Okay, uh, so basically what we have is a chimera sort of creature with a floral design mane that is uh, metallic shiny gold. And it is the, the I want to say, peaceable guardian of a beautiful forest. Now, there should be, in the scene, the Guardian Chimera, plus an arch that they are you know, kind of stationed around under this arch uh, that is part of a wall with the force behind them. Uh, exactly what the anatomy of this creature is is sort of up for uh, picks. Uh, also, what sort of design that is is up for picks. Uh, what the wall looks like is up to you guys. What time of day is up to you guys. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, play there, and we will get into reviewing the images. Okay, okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, execution scene. Okay, we will bring that back up if we need to look at it. 
I believe we have like 20, 21, 22 different, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 12, 18, 24. Okay, we got like 24 being submitted here. Uh, first up is Andrew Doris, uh, just going alphabetically. Boom. Uh, I'll just take a look at the comic here before we, we jump into it. Uh, Iwa, hey, thanks, hi. Uh, Martin Ruka, I love the Friday. Well, thank you for joining, Martin. Uh, shy or she? Not sure how you say that. From Brazil, can't understand anything, but I'm enjoying. <laughs> well, sorry you can't understand anything. Maybe I'll talk a little bit slower. Uh, this stream perfectly me, uh, 8 p.m. Yeah, uh, next week we might jump it back. I'm thinking maybe for the uh, the challenge streams we will do the earlier time for the Europeans, and maybe for the uh, in between weeks we may do the uh, the later time because sometimes uh, it's good for me to do it later in the day. Doing it at you know like one, two, and three in the afternoon really breaks the day up for me. Okay, so uh, Andrew Doris, first thing before I forget, I used the little snippet of this guy's head on the thumbnail for the video. So uh, I have a credit in the description cover art by Andrew Doris. Uh, if that's not okay with you, let me know. I will, I will replace that with something else. But uh, I thought this was a particularly successful image. And it, it's really on a good roll here. So, yeah, right off the bat, you're on the right track. It's a widely successful image. So congrats on that. Uh, some of the things that I really like is you really leaned into the golden mane. Uh, you have an interesting looking character. And everything in the description that I asked for is right there. So there we go. Uh, where I could see to improve this and push this a bit more, and as a art director slash art teacher, I'm going to say we got a lot of dead space. Uh, so there's just a lot of this image that isn't being utilized to really do anything. Uh, all of the stuff that we really care about is right here in this area and that's only taking up about half of the visual real estate so my recommendation my first one would be to just crop in on that sucker uh, we can just fill the frame with the subject remember as i said at the beginning of this challenge this is an mtg style challenge that is if this was an illustration for magic and that being the case, those images are very small. So we need them to work as good as possible on a very small printing size. And <laughs> not that small, that's like postage stamp. Uh, but <laughs> two, you know, two by three inches or so. One, what is it, one and a half by two and a half? Yeah, I think it's like one by two and a half. And uh, we don't want to have much wasted space when you're working with that little so if there was something that you were doing that was adding more interest to all of this, then that would be one thing. But as it's not really adding anything, I'm going to say crop in on it. Uh, you could say that this is showing a barren area and you're contrasting that against the forest, but you still get a bit of that idea with this anyway. So that would be me. Uh, you're saying the audio is dropping a little bit? Uh, let me know if the audio is okay for you guys. Uh, I haven't had any problems with this uh, Yeti mic. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, what else? Now, looking at the creature, now I'm going to definitely talk about the creature because it is the focal point. Uh, widely successful. I'm not sure I'm getting what this thing is made of. It almost feels like this is made of rock, um, which is okay, but it, that's not carried through the head. So the head looks like it's made of normal anatomy, uh, but just gray. And this feels like it's made of some rock texture. Now a rock texture with like the golden stuff on it, that's cool, that's fine. Uh, but let's make sure that that's carried through, in which case we don't want pink in the ears. That would all need to be rock. 
We don't want individual hairs that would need to be rock. And it could have, and I think this is actually a really interesting idea, where it is almost like a, a living statue that has this golden mane on it and that its eyes are completely stone. You know, everything about it is stone except for the mane. And you could even have some cool, like, designs, you know, coming down where it, it, there's design work kind of engraved into the stone. I and mean, if you wanted to go that way, I mean, it's gray to begin with. That's why it was making me think. Uh, something else that bothers me is you've got these, like, octopus tentacles. Now, I know you're, you're trying to be creative, do something a bit different, but that doesn't fit with anything else in the design. So it would be better to try to find some flower-based uh, thing where, you know, these whiskers come down, but they're, they're almost like, like, you know, delicate orchids kind of coming down. Uh, there are, there's all kinds of little pestles and, and, and I, I don't know, flower anatomy, all the little things that come out of the top of different flowers. Uh, you could easily you do something like that uh, that comes down here. Or you use the green of the eyes and it's like a little um, like a little vine that's kind of curling down, like a green vine, like it's growing. Okay, uh, that would be one. Oh, that's not what I meant to hit. Uh, the other thing is this straight line right across the head is a little weird. Uh, it's so it's so straight. And again, you've got all of these organic curves and you just have this straight line right across it. Uh, if that's another one where it, you need to sell that, like even if you curved it a little bit, it almost looked like a mustache, but, or if you made more of them, if it became a pattern, it would be a little more believable, but just having one straight line. Uh, so multiple options to how you want to resolve that. Uh, you're, you're getting a really good amount of skill and you're getting a good uh, sense for how to handle things. So I don't want to tell you how to handle them. Uh, you're at the point where I want to just note some things to you. And then I trust that you will find good resolutions to those. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, that's all okay. We have kind of a disparity between uh, I, I am, imagine you're going to fix this. These like f high resolution photo based flowers, uh, very realistic, lots of sharp detail compared to stuff that's very painterly. Uh, you'll need to go back and paint that so it doesn't stand out so much. And let's, you know, if you're going to have like the flowers and a couple of skulls, then let's maybe triple the amount and make, you know, make use of this and, and fill this up with some more stuff. Um, what else? We could even darken this up here a bit. I'm trying to think about how to get more attention back on the creature. And I'm curious if we if we knock down that shadow some more, see that? Then it helps bring some attention back on the creature. Oh, no, nope. I don't want it to go over that area. Just did that. <laughs> Having the bright lights okay. It's almost like he's stepping into this really shadowed area. And now that golden mane actually feels like it's standing out more because it's not competing against uh, the, the values of the lighter wall. So uh, something on that line, you'll probably want to work more color into it, though. All right, that's all I can do uh, for yours. Sorry, but with 22 of them, I can only spend uh, a couple of minutes on each. Nope, that's not what I'm trying to open. There we go. Next up, Arlie. Hey, thanks for joining another one, Arlie. Okay, uh, 
Actually, similar thing here. Uh, a lot of unused or unutilized uh, real estate on your canvas. Uh, it, we don't need much uh, visibility of a, a forest uh, or a garden in order to understand what that is. Remember, the scene is about the Gilded Guardian. This is a creature. It's about the creature. It's not about the environment. The environment's secondary to the creature. And we have a very small creature in this image. So let's try. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for uh, joining in, Andrew. Let's try doing a similar thing and just filling this space up more with the subject. And I want to make a copy and, and just grab uh, Guardian here and grab him onto another layer so I can move this one. So let's put this over here. We don't necessarily need to see the top of that arch. We, we get it's some sort of archway. That's fine. And then we could even... So we, we need to make sure that this guy is visible. We don't necessarily need to see his whole tail. This guy needs to be most of the scene, uh, if, if possible. And that's one of the things I have over here, if we can pull up some uh, MTG refs. Uh, these are some different MTG, uh, obviously a much darker, <laughs> a much darker sort of image. But look how much of the real estate of the image uh, creatures take up in an MTG image. Yeah, there is enough environment that you have a feeling of what's going on and where this is taking place, but it is clearly about the creature. Uh, here's one of uh, one of the planeswalkers. Uh, if you're not familiar with Mr. Ron's work, Chris Ron, a uh, really cool guy, uh, go look at his stuff. Chris Ron, beautiful handling of colors and values, uh, composition. Uh, he does a lot of his in traditional oil painting. Gives him, uh, he has to have a lot of control and plan out what he's going to do before he does it. Uh, good use of the real estate of the whole image, you know, and enough to support it. So make sure that you're looking at some of that stuff too. So over here, uh, if we can get him that bigger, I'm going to just delete some of this. And the thing about these changes is they don't actually take, it's not like repainting the entire image. I'm curious, if we reverse that, transform. So what I'm thinking here is if we zoom up on this image and we have Mr. Chimera here, and then we have him, uh, the arch behind it, we're just making it very right heavy. And so I'm thinking if we were to reverse it where either uh, he or the background is going the other way so transform horizontal now that actually balances a bit better right so now we have the arch on one side and we have him on uh, being heavier visually on the other side and yeah now that fills the frame better and let's us uh show off his size maybe a little bit better too. Yeah, see now that's all right here. Now these guys are balancing each other out that the weight of that visual element is kind of balancing the weight of that visual element. Uh, this is sloping down that way and this wall, you might even push it a bit more to slope down the other way and that's going that way. And there we go. All the same basic stuff that you already have in your image, but let's just rebalance it so that we get more uh, pump out of it, uh, get more, uh, get more, I don't know, impact out of it, and better use of the overall uh, image space. Uh, now, that said, let's talk uh, just a moment. Um, you have a very straightforward kind of lion, um, lion creature. Uh, this is a very standard main, all right? So make sure we're using, we w don't want this just to be a golden lion. We want this to be a flower main. There, there's something, um, uh, 
what what's the word um, flower based like plant based about him uh, i just went out to google and grabbed some images so go out there just look at some flowers and look at some of the shapes that we can get from some of these flowers see how you can incorporate these you know and and you could like get this and copy and paste it and you know try to make a pattern out of it and see what you can make also i just googled golden flower so if you don't know how to do a golden flower there's somebody actually made a golden sort of flower and there's your good reference right there uh you know go look at orchids look at lilies tulips i mean whatever kind of flower sort of interest you if you want delicate uh shapes coming off of it do you want uh big bold shapes there's a lot of different options there uh will says swatches i find the fill the frame with the subject principle really hard to follow is it always the rule i've seen some amazing images that don't seem to follow that rule okay that's a good question uh and that's a good comment will and it's worth uh addressing fill the frame with the subject is a good rule of thumb now with rules of thumb it, it is a rule of thumb it's not a law uh, so there are exceptions to every rule of thumb in this case it is absolutely true because we have a very clear subject matter it is the gilded guardian that's what this image is about and it also has a very clear fictional usage on a magic card so we know that it needs to make up as much as the real estate as reasonably can because it has a very small printing size and that that principle would hold true in that case now sometimes they don't sometimes that's not true uh, where it is more of a narrative piece so for instance if you want to make someone feel lonely or isolated maybe you show a uh, an astronaut on an alien planet and he, he want to make him feel like he's isolated on that planet then you show him standing there and he's this small figure in the middle of this huge you know flat plain with very distant mountains in the background around him and he takes up all of you know five percent of the canvas so fill the frame with your subject and we say well the subject is an astronaut not necessarily the subject is the feeling of the astronaut being isolated so in that case yes you filled the frame with your subject but the subject wasn't the visual astronaut himself it was the mood or the tone or the narrative that you were trying to convey and you will also see that in cinematography where rule of thumb is you know if somebody's talking you fill the frame with the subject you, you crop in about like this on a headshot of somebody talking but if you're trying to do something more than just show them the character then you might offset it so that you only get part of their face in this big empty space now why might you do that because you want to indicate that there's something out there in the dark or you're about to have a jump scare again it's moved from being just showing you this thing to being part of a narrative or or a wider uh mood so yeah um that that's why i say it and it's 100 percent true with this one but yeah there are some other times that it's not and it's also a good rule of thumb if you're shooting photographs it's better to crop in a bit more than you probably think you should all right, there we go, Aurelie. Uh, make sure that you're getting some flower, more flower inspiration around this, but having him laying there, this sort of composition. I do like your arch. I think that's pretty cool. And um, good, bright colors. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, over this one. Next up, Beniamino. Uh, Benny Amino, man, you have been with me with the Swatches and Patreon for a long time, and I just want to say thank you. And I can definitely tell that you have been putting time in for a long while, and you're improving. Uh, there is a lot of good things about this image. A uh, very interesting design for your character. Let's uh, zoom in so everybody online can get a, a nice view of this guy. 
Uh, very cool. Like you gave him a culture. Uh, you've given him a, a real personality. I love some of the shapes that you've come up with. Let me make a new layer so I don't have to fix that. Uh, you've got these nice little extras where the, the hair comes off. And you got that going on. This is really nice. You've created a pattern out of that, um, that hair and those sweeps. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Will says, I suppose I find it hard to follow because I always make up a narrative for, for my images. No, and that's fine. But for a, something that already has a guide set for it, like this challenge, then it's not about your narrative. It's about mine because it's my, you know, it's my brief. And that's, that's where I'm trying to convey with these challenges. Isn't just, I'm trying to get you to draw, but sometimes I'm trying to get you to also understand how to work within a framework where it's not just your ideas, it's you expounding on my ideas. And I'm doing that just for the challenge. No, I, I don't want to have any claim of your art. You, you know, please don't misunderstand me. But that is something that every artist has to face when they start working professionally. Uh, I know a lot of you guys want to, or that is your, your aim. And it's a lesson that I certainly had to learn is there is a big difference between doing an image for yourself that is your idea and you get to make it have whatever narrative you want and doing one for a client where it is their idea, their narrative, and you do what they want. But that doesn't mean you don't get to be artistic. That just means that you need to learn a new skill set. And that skill set is not about rendering. It's about expounding. It's about being creative within a framework. It's about interpreting words into images and being able to listen and understand someone well enough through a brief that you can give them that and more. Not your version of that, but what they want and more. And that's something that you don't that doesn't get talked about that much. And rendering is a skill set. How to draw a lion, how to draw a forest, how to paint light, those are all things that you need. But other things you need is an ability to know when to constrain yourself, when to use that creativity, how to use that creativity. And that's not necessarily an easy thing to learn, but it's something that has to be learned. And I think this is a good challenge in order to try to, to get that. Okay, so about this particular image, we're getting uh, a bit too dark here. Uh, when I get it down, I'm losing 90% of what's in this shadow. So we've got to bump that up and Oh, that, well, that would make sense because I, uh, I'm not on that tool. <laughs> Come over here. Oh, what? Uh, no, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this thing. Nope. I'm going to pick everything and then I'm just not going to select this. That would work better. <laughs> I was like, how can I select the dark stuff? Oh, I guess I could do like select color range too. Well, that's Photoshop for you. There's always 10 ways to do the same thing. And when your computer is slow, you never know which one's going to be best. Okay, so I just want to push that up a bit. Now, having a different color scheme to it, a different tint to all of the light in here, 
can make it feel shadowed without it having to get too dark. So you were going to go with um, kind of a bluish, uh, slightly violet. So let's do that. And so, you know, that can all be kind of blue-violet in there if you want. I might warm that up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and that way we're not, we're not losing too much there. But we also are getting very grayed out. Make sure we don't get too grayed out here. Uh, and this sort of goes with uh, quite a few of you guys have got really dull in the background. This is somewhere where we can use a lot of nice pop of color uh, make sure that you have a good lighting reference and it doesn't have to be an exact so like over here and like i had that on the uh, the reference just reference that i mean that that's a beautiful set of colors and lighting with light and shadow and you see the stuff in the shadow isn't uh it isn't blacked out uh, actually, the inverse would be more true. The, the light is almost blown out, but not so much that we're losing detail of everything. Uh, another beautiful image from uh, Rhyme. Uh, good example of lighting and shadow. The shadow still has plenty of light. If most of your image is going to be shadowed, then you probably want to have it shadowed like that, which is a very full lit shadow. And then let the light part be almost blown out. But if most image is going to be light, then let the shadows be darker and let, you know, plenty of light be in there. Uh, this is another wonderful piece that it has a very strong sense of sunlight, but we're not losing either the light or the shadow. So, you know, look at something like that and don't feel bad for using some of the color scheme and the value scheme that you find on other images. If they work, try them out, experiment with them. You'll end up probably adjusting it for what you're doing, but nobody has claim to any color scheme. Every color scheme's already been done by somebody somewhere. You're not gonna come up with a new one. Uh, and it can be a lot better than, than just trying to, to make it up, right? And there's good answers out there if you wanna go looking for them. Okay, so that's a big one here is let's uh, double down on how you're gonna light this. Uh, make sure that we don't lose too much color in all of this. I don't know why it's not. Uh, there we go. Uh, we do need some color in here, even if it's going to be shaded. And we still need to get his body to stand out more uh, than it is, because it's really disappearing into this shadow. Uh, maybe we have more light on it, or maybe his body. I'm thinking, like, if his body itself was slick black, and then it had gold, and then the black would stand out from the background, and the gold would stand out from the background. And so one would be lighter than, or brighter than, and the other one would be darker than. Uh, that could work really well in this scene too. Uh, compositionally, it's working pretty well. You might want to crop in a bit more here. I, mean, I, I think you might be able to just get rid of a little bit of that. Yeah, not much, yep. something like that. There you go. Uh, you're on the right track, man. Looks good, look forward to uh, seeing the final, definitely. Uh, Buno Lagos. Uh, okay, I'm thinking you might have uploaded the wrong image. Because this, uh, I don't know what this is, and it's tiny. Um, yeah, I'm thinking you might have accidentally, like, uploaded a thumbnail, because... Yeah. Um, and I'm also, I'm just, at this resolution, I'm not able to make this out very well. I want to think there might be, like, a face here, but I don't know. Um, yeah, my, my guess is like this is the arch and he's like up on top of this rock or something, but I'm sorry. I, unless I have a, a better resolution image to work with, I, I, I can't do much with this. Uh, apologies. 
I, I can't really make it out. Uh, so uh, if you do send it in, just a, just a reminder, I guess. If you do send it in, please double check that you're sending in the right image. It should be 3,000 pixels wide and try to make it a JPEG. Uh, occasionally people are doing PNG files. PNGs are like five, ten times bigger than JPEGs. One of the reasons they JPEGs is because it keeps it small. So try to keep them JPEGs. Um, CM, uh, not CMYK, uh, RGB. Okay, so Christoph. Okay, all right. All right, I like the color. I like the idea of gold. People actually have to bring in treasure. Uh, building an interesting scene with a new layer, uh, with like uh, uh, ruins and some old pillars and stuff. But this is another one where we're losing focus of what this challenge is about. This challenge is not about the scene. It's not about the stairs. It's not about the forest. It's not about the. Uh, it's not about the treasure. It's not about the gifts. It's about the creature. It is a creature illustration, and I know. I don't want to be hard. I don't want to be hard. I'm, I'm trying to write a line here. I'm trying to write a line where I'm not being hard on you guys, but I also, I have to make sure that you're, you're following what the challenge is about. Uh, like I said at the beginning of this challenge, this is an MTG style challenge, as if you were making this image for magic and I was your art director. And this is, and if you sent this to me and I was the art director and I had given you this commission, I'm gonna say, okay, Christoph, I think you missed the mark. This isn't about where this guy is. We've got another illustrator doing that. This is about the guardian and we need to see him. I need you to show me how cool this guy is and it needs to be front and center it is a creature illustration. It's about the creature. So, uh, another one where this guy, that, that's the image, right? That's the image right here. That's what this image is about, this dude. And he's very small in the image. And all the dark part about him is being lost in the, uh, the doorway. Another thing is, it's not working the way that the brief said. It said an archway that leads to this forest. And we've got a doorway leading to some sort of tomb. Okay, so going back, uh, I had to jot down a couple of things about this because uh, I'm seeing this from almost half of the images being sent in on this challenge. And that is understanding when and how to use artistic creativity and when it's appropriate and how to do so because right now this is an example of kind of missing the mark of reading it and going oh it has a woods and forest okay that's cool i want to do that and then oh there's gifts okay i want to do that and then forgetting what the whole thing is actually about um there there is times for creativity, and I want you guys to know creativity, being able to get an idea and run with it in multiple directions is a good skill. I'm not coming down on that at all. That is a, that is a sign of a good artist, is that they can be able to get an idea and use it as a springboard to come up with other great ideas but it's a sign of a mature artist that knows how to be creative within the confines that he is given. Those are two different skill sets. And you have to learn how to use one or the other when appropriate. So in this case, if you want to keep the scene as it is, then, okay, let's get rid of the tomb 
look with the dark background. Just make it a stone arch. And we'll just say this is the staircase leading up to the stone arch. The whole thing is in this beautiful woods. I'm fine. That's cool. And then you make the creature twice as big and put him right up there in the middle. Oh, actually, you guys reminded me. I totally forgot to take it out of my bag. <laughs> my glasses. I uh, just forgot. I was getting set up and I didn't grab them. Uh, what uh, type of glasses do I use? That's a really good question. Uh, I don't remember who these guys are by. Now, I did buy a pair of Prospect. Uh, these are not, uh, what do you call it? Uh, correctional. These are not correctional glasses. These are computer glasses that they block the blue wavelength of light that messes up with your sleep cycle and it also reduces eye strain. So I bought a pair by Prospect. You can see the name right there. And that's not what these are. I just like the case. And they just didn't fit quite right on me. So I bought this other pair by some other company. I'll have to look it up. I'll let you guys know. And I've been really happy. They both work the same. But I've been really happy with these. I, mean, I don't like the big frame on them. I like thin ones. And I will tell you, they have reduced my eye strain from working at a computer by about 90%. Legitimately. Um, I used to have eye strain, uh, eye pain, and headaches uh, Fridays and Saturdays from how long I was on the computer during the week. And I've only got mild eye pain, eye strain, I think twice within the last six months. So they're highly effective. Uh, I, I paid about $25 for these. Uh, so well worth the money. Uh, they do have plastic lenses and I'll probably buy a new pair nah, in not too long because they do get scratched up a little bit. Um, but yeah. Yeah, their blue light filter is really neat. Uh, I liked this company. Man, for the life of me, I can't remember who they are. But they actually send a little blue light, and you can shine it through the lens onto a white piece of paper, and the blue light won't come through. It'll come, you know, you can see, you can shine it on the, the white paper, and you can see the bright blue light. But as soon as you put it over the lens, like 95% of it is stopped. Uh, another good thing about these lenses is that they're only about 2% tinted. They're almost completely clear and untinted. Um, yeah, I'll put it out on the uh, Swatches Facebook group, uh, which brand. I'll have to look it up on Amazon and see who I ordered it from. Um, what else about them? No, I've been really happy with them. Well, maybe I'll check to see if they want to be a sponsor or something. But I... I I have not, for my life, needed glasses, so I, I, I'm getting used to the habit of wearing them. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't generally wear glasses. Okay, so on this guy, and let's try to give us more of, of a three-quarter view of the character. Give me some sort of angle. Let me see his body. This is, uh, Christoph, this is you showcasing how incredible this thing is to me, the viewer. All right, so show him off to me. All right, next up, Corny. I don't, I don't recognize that name. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember this one. All right, so I have <laughs> to adjust this. This is very grayed out, but there's beautiful line work here. So hopefully, I can. There we go. Yep. I want to just alter that so we had better visibility of what's going on. So in the future, if you're sending in line work, uh, try to keep it a bit more like this uh, instead of so dark. Uh, it's barely visible. Oh, yeah. I was saying about the tint. Uh, some of those computer glasses out there that are, that are blue light filters are very yellow tinted. So make sure that you're buying one that has much clearer lens to it. And 
uh, yet otherwise, you know, as you're painting, you're going to be getting your colors way different than uh, what everybody else is going to be seeing. But, uh, okay, corny. Really nice work. Yes, I'm with Leo on this. Uh, there is some really gorgeous work going on here. I would say that it is probably overdone, over-refined for a concept or a sketch. Uh, it's to the point where if I start asking for changes, you're going to be losing a lot of time, uh, which kind of makes me not want to say much, but there we go. I'll toss it to you. You can decide what you want to do about it or not. Uh, first off, love your creature. Now, this is good. Creature, very clear. The scene is very clear, right? We've got the archway. We've got the forest. We've got the creatures. We've got some gifts. We have the uh, steps. And then we have enough designs and stuff and everything that it feels like it has a place. Like, this is a believable place. The, the, as I usually say, it has a culture behind it. Uh, it has a society. It's an art. Uh, wonderful design on this fella. Love this. Look at these nice shapes. This is what I was talking about on some of the other ones. Uh, when you have the option to have that kind of creativity, lean into it. And that's uh, something else I kind of want to talk about is when you're reading a brief or you're having to do a scene that has limitations, figure out where your points of creativity are. There are some things that you shouldn't be creative with. There are other things that you do. Uh, when I say a golden flower sort of mane on this creature, that should be like, ding, ding, ding. This is where I can really do something interesting. That is so different. It's very unusual. And that should be like, where you get to go to town and really come up with some fun shapes and fun designs and really let it inspire more things about the care um, the creature. Uh, but a lot of you didn't. Uh, Andrew did. Andrew had a really cool looking sort of uh, almost fungal flower sort of shape. Uh, same, so, same thing here. Uh, running up into these. Really soft and wavy. I'm not sure how you're going to render it all, but there we go. It's really cool. Uh, okay, uh, what would I adjust? Uh, again, I still feel like there's 30% of this image that really isn't doing that much for us. Uh, everything that we really need to know is being established in this area right here. Well, we, could, we could just get right up in here, and we haven't lost any of the narrative of the scene. Everything is exactly the same if we just go in. And then that allows us to put more time rendering the things that are more important. So I'm glad that you spent the time to, you know, think this out. But the only way that this really makes sense or is going to be worth it is if we get... Like, if you want to use all this beautiful stuff... I don't know, I'm gesturing with my hand. You can't see where I'm pointing. Um, if you want to use all this down here, which I kind of like this angled staircase and I like the variety of stuff here, we could do where you just change the sizes of these guys and let that be more like this. So he's bigger, the arch is bigger, but you still have the same steps. You still have all the gifts and that can work excellent as well just around that line and it also allows us to have something break the canvas where here it feels like everything is just sitting neatly kind of inside of the canvas very safe right in the middle but if we were to do this we actually let part of that run out of the canvas and that can actually strengthen the image so this is really cool was it made using a computer program yeah, I'm pretty sure this was made in Photoshop. I uh, imagine they had the uh, maybe the smooth smoothing turned on on their line drawing. Uh, and you can tell that those are photo-inspired uh, textures, like brick textures and stuff. Maybe same sort of thing with the trees? I don't know. 
Uh, okay, so that would be one suggestion, uh, just either cropping in or making those guys bigger, somewhere on that line. And what else? I'm getting a little lost on what's going on somewhere here down in this area. Um, I, I'm guessing he has like, I, I don't know. I don't know what some of this is. And if you're confident that you can clarify that when you get to lighting and colors, that's fine. Uh, but from just the line work, I'm getting a little confused there. This also feels like maybe there's like a pot or something back here, which I would say get rid of that. Uh, I feel like maybe this is like a tail. Uh, that, that doesn't feel right. So let's get rid of that shape and maybe even this one just to give a little clarity to to the end of this um i almost feel like you could have some nice little shapes at the end you have all these beautiful shapes you have this nice curve you have some big curves here and then you just end it with the big curves here as well uh it might be a good place to incorporate and mimic some of the shapes that you have from the head back here as well so you know consider doing something a bit more of that line uh -huh. okay uh this is a bit off with the uh, perspective so let's address that uh much of this looks pretty accurate uh the steps all look pretty solid and this though this archway I'll forget the little bump right there. It's coming down, something like that. Uh, okay, so we've got an angle here. Let's see if we can throw up some lines real quick. Just talk perspective for a moment. Uh, horizon line is around here. Oh, 12. We don't really need 12, do we? We do like four. Rising line's about there. And we have perspective of this going way... I'm trying to look at how he lined it up on the floor. Perspective line's going like that. Does that look about right? Maybe maybe not quite that far. Well, I'm... Yeah, let's see. No, it's like you're trying to make that straight. Okay, so that's straight. Uh, I don't know if you ran perspective lines or you're just guessing. I'm trying to match this and I'm not sure. I think it's about there. Uh, I'm, I'm taking more time to try to figure it out. Um, uh, if you're not getting a good stream, uh, try restarting that window uh, reloading the page and also remember it will be recorded so you'll be able to, to play it back okay so and okay this is all going this way this okay this wall the whole okay let me back up this wall is going away from us. It's going that way away from us. The top is going this way. We have easy perspective on the top. So that vanishing point's like way out there somewhere. And that means that we cannot see the inside of that wall. If that wall is turned away from us, we cannot see the inside of it. I mean, think of it like if we just have a, a block. Now, if we see that block from straight from the front, then we, uh, we don't see any of the sides. But if we turn it a little bit, right, we put a little perspective on it, we're going to see some of that side, right? Right there. Uh, 
I don't know what's given me encoding overload because, uh, yeah, OBS is saying it's having problems with it. I don't know why. I set the settings down. Uh, so you're going to see that side of it. But that also means that if there is a archway or doorway in this, we're going to see this thickness. And then that's above us, so we're going to see a bit of that roof. But we cannot see that underside where I'll do dotted lines because it would be like seen through. We're not going to be able to see that wall because that's on the inside. And the same thing here, it doesn't matter if it's curved or not, this wall is going away from us and that means that there's, it's going to go in that way and that other side is going to do something like that. Right, it's going to curve around like you're going to have a piece of ribbon. Get what I'm saying? Like they're going to they're going to offset each other. Same short sort of shape, but they're going to like there we go. That's better. So it's the same sort of shape. You got that curve here, and then exact same curve on the other side, except for it's set back further. And right now you're showing that one as if it's doing this, uh, which I, if you have it angled in severely, you know, from a top view, if it's angled in, on the wall, then you might get a little bit of the view of that side, but I think it's getting too complicated. It's too easy to make it look like it's wrong. But, um, what else? No, I, uh, you know, if you had put colors on here, we could talk a little bit about the colors, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the rest of it. This stuff's all well rendered. Uh, double check your perspective, see about make, utilizing the space a little bit better, and the tail. So yeah, I'm, I think that's good to wrap it up there. Okay, Daniel Rays. Yeah, YouTube's really says I have bad settings, current frame rate. Frequency. I don't know. Uh, I had set. I set the uh, the string settings down. So I'm not sure what else to lower if unless I just lower the the video resolution. I can try lowering the, uh, the video resolution